Hi there, this is Seth Schaefer of Team Just Cause Robotics, and today we'll be talking about why I ordered the Tesla Cybertruck. Hello, this is Seth Schaefer of Team Just Cause Robotics, and today we're going to be doing an overview of Division version 2.5. I'll be covering all of the differences between version 2.0 and 2.5, as well as talking about some future changes that I might make to version 2.5 to make probably a version 2.6, I'd say. I'm not going to make enough changes to warrant a whole 3.0 redesign like I did from 1.0 to 2.0. So yeah, this is what version 2.5 currently looks like in CAD, and it looks considerably different from this in real life in a couple ways, namely that all the 3D printed parts are actually the same color of just clear nylon instead of blue, and uh, the wedges are a little bit less uniform colored because I attempted to heat anodize them since they are titanium now. Um, other than that, let's get into all the differences and I will go one by one and hopefully in an order that makes some sense. Let's get to what the major changes were from version 2 to version 2.5. So the first big change was titanium wedges. Um, the previous version used aluminum 0.09 inch thick wedges and I've moved to titanium 1 16th inch thick wedges, which are like a bit over one and a half millimeters thick. Um, I did this because I saw Nate Franklin at uh, the Franklin Institute event using two millimeter titanium wedges on Slim Pickens, his ant weight, as well as Thunderchild, his beetle weight, which went on to win the event. And then at Sword, he brought both of those robots and actually managed to win at Sword Fall 2019 with his Ant Slim Pickens, um, though Thunderchild also did pretty well as well. So Titanium seemed to be working really well for him, making his bots really, really good defensive wedge bots. And I figured even a thinner version of that would still be good armor even for a spinner bot that isn't as defensive, simply because it's very hard compared to aluminum and it's good at deflecting attacks. Um, the second major difference is this upright if the motor mount is now slotted, so you can get a better look of it at it here. There's slots where the screws mount to the motor, and it, the screws come in from the opposite side from the previous version, which is shown here. Here I used to have a pocket for the original Chinese motor mounts, which are terrible, really, really chintzy aluminum. And um, the screws come in from this side, but like because the top armor is about this height, it made it so that these bottom two screws were like inaccessible without having to take the top armor off and it was a whole mess. Um, with the new version, I can pretty much get access to these screws with a right angle hex wrench as long as the pulley is off. So I can get in here with a hex wrench to undo the set screw of the pulley and take that off and then use a separate hex wrench to get to these four screws, loosen them, slide this about to tension the belt, um, etc. Maybe not as great as it might be if I could access those with the pulley still on, but it's still a major improvement. And then third change, all of the 3D printed parts are nylon instead of PETG, which I used before, which fractured and cracked and brittle failures, which I had really expected it not to do, but it turns out PETG, pretty brittle. PLA is supposedly more brittle, but PETG is apparently also fairly brittle sometimes. Um, it's possible that I didn't have the best settings when I was printing it. I'm pretty sure it wasn't waterlogged because I was printing it out of the same dry box I used for nylon and that's been fine for nylon which is very hygroscopic so not really sure if something went wrong, if so what went wrong but either way I'm moving away from it because I got a Prusa that can print nylon just fine and nylon's objectively better in pretty much every way. Um, number four, 3D printed top armor is replacing the previous acrylic armor which uh, exploded and my battery launched out of the bot at Franklin because of that. So that was a change that needed to happen. Didn't necessarily need to be 3D printed, nor nylon. I originally was gonna actually laser cut some uh, acetyl or Delrin, but the laser cutter at the Makerspace was not working very well, which I'll get into later. And 3D printing seemed more convenient than trying to like cut it up by hand or anything like that. So I just did that and it worked fine, even though they came out slightly warped because nylon's a little bit difficult. It's, it's difficult to print really like large, flat base area parts without the warping in nylon, 
but smaller parts are generally fine, and even with the warping, like, they were functional, but I might move to something different later. I don't know. And then number five was I changed out the weapon ESC, which I don't have shown in CAD, but I changed it from a 35 amp to a 50 amp BL Heli 32 ESC, and uh, the 35 amp was also BL Heli, but um, it just couldn't cope with the amount of current the motor would draw when I was trying to self-write and spin off repeatedly after like hits when it would stop and all of that. So moving to the 50 amp seems to have greatly benefited the uh, reliability of the weapon electrically. So now I'm mostly just fighting with mechanical reliability issues. Um, other minor changes, um, I had to redesign the wedge mounts because of the wedges being different and the absence of the aluminum forks meant that I had to build in this extra part to the wedge mounts to basically make it so that they were more, uh, oh that's weird, there's not a fillet there, or there's on the other side. Um, anyway, I had to redesign the wedge mounts to make it so that they would accommodate the screws that hold the side armor on and also attach to the base plate where the previous aluminum forks were, um, just so I didn't have to change out either of those two parts. I forgot to cat in the screws here, but you get the idea. There's now countersunk screws here instead of the previous ones, uh, just so that this sits more flush to the ground, and the robot still uh, has the wedges scraping the ground instead of the forks. If those screws had stuck out, then they would be kind of touching the ground instead. And then I also switched the forks. That's the other, like, it's sixth. I guess that's kind of more of a minor change. Uh, another minor change is that these forks are now 3D printed nylon. Originally I was going to use the same titanium, but it turned out to be too much of a pain to do that, so these are now 3D printed nylon, and that's actually worked out even better than I think uh, titanium ones would have, because they're really flat to the ground, and they're flexible, which means that it's harder for me to get stuck with these like wedged under a seam in the between the wall and floor, or on a seam in the floor, because they'll kind of flex out of the way instead of getting like jammed in with a really sharp metal edge. So yeah. Um, that cover is pretty much everything. Oh yeah, one other slight change was these motor mounts. I actually didn't even use the redesigned ones, but I, I redesigned them just getting rid of the uh, holes because it turns out that when you're 3D printing, um, there's perimeters around all those holes. So this actually is pretty much heavier or as heavy as this with no holes. But I actually used one with holes in it just because I forgot to swap them before the event at Sword, and so that's not really so much of a change for the version I fought at Sword as it is a change that I was intending to have for the version I fought at Sword, but it's such a minor change it's like barely worth mentioning. So yeah, let's get on to how I made the wedges. So I have, in front of me I'm looking at the CAD, but I took some video of me making the wedges, uh, or bending the wedges at least, so I'll just talk about the process of actually cutting out, drilling, and bending these. So I talked to Nate Franklin briefly and got his recommendations for the process to use to cut, bend, and drill these. He recommended a specific set of drill bits. I actually used slightly different ones than he recommended to drill through it. And uh, he didn't have a good recommendation specifically for cutting it, but just said that a bandsaw worked for him. And when I looked online, I found out that supposedly normal bandsaw blades wouldn't work, but I ended up just using the stock one that was on the bandsaw at the Makerspace, which was set up for wood, and it still worked fine for whatever reason. And um, supposedly a jigsaw or a sawzall could potentially work as well, though you have to find a creative way of actually holding the metal so that it doesn't flex out of your way. And then for drilling it, like I said, I used um, some sort of specialized drill bits. I used ones that are considerably better than just your standard high-speed steel jobber bits. I really would probably have to recommend higher quality ones. Nate Franklin specifically recommended a set from Milwaukee brand that claimed to be 10 times the life of high speed steel bits. I happened to have randomly long beforehand purchased a set that was also Milwaukee brand and advertises three times the life of high speed steel bits and I just used those because I didn't feel like spending 50 to $70 on a drill bit set when I already had a $30 fairly nice drill bit set and those worked just fine for me. And then the bending. So um, when I did some research online and talked to Nate, pretty much what I found is that number one consideration for bending titanium, even relatively thin titanium, like the 1 16th inch stuff I had here, you need heat. 
there's pretty much no way you're going to bend it without cracking it, without heating it up along the bend line. And then number two is you can use like a pry bar or something like that. Actually, Robert Cowan has a really great video of sh showing how some professionals did this with eighth inch and then um, actually quarter inch material for his wedges for crippling depression. But um, barring having some sort of pry bar, actually just using a hammer and wailing on it until it's about the right um, angle worked for me and apparently also worked for Nate Franklin. So. If you have, if you don't feel like buying a specialized pry bar that clamps on to your edge, then I guess that's what I would recommend, even though it's kind of sketchy to do it that way. I was like worried that I would snap the metal or something, but because it's heated up and it's pliable at that point, it really won't snap off no matter how hard you hit it. It's just gonna maybe overbend. And obviously it's harder to get your angle perfect with a hammer than it is with like a pry bar and a, an angle gauge or whatever but it certainly does work. Um, I got my titanium off of eBay, if you were wondering, I might include a link below, probably will. And um, there's apparently a list of sellers that have them. Robert Cowan in his video specifically recommended a specific uh, source. I forget if I got mine from that source or just another random seller, but they claim to be grade five. They held up in combat, so I assume they are grade five, but I have zero way of verifying that the seller's listings are all legitimate or anything, so don't count this as like a ringing endorsement. Um, one of the issues I had with drilling is simply aligning the holes. So I, I planned to use the laser cutter and cut out a template, but the laser cutter wasn't really working well for me. For some reason, whenever I imported my model, uh, the 2D CAD looked fine on my computer, but then when I imported it into the sketchy software that runs the laser cutter, all the holes like moved randomly away, and it wasn't in like predictable way, and they also like reoriented themselves. So I pretty much couldn't laser cut the holes accurately into my template, but I was able to laser cut out the flat pattern, which looks like this, and. Uh, etch these two lines for where the bend needed to be roughly and then I printed out on a piece of paper the same template and basically used that to um, center punch marks for and then ultimately drill with the cordless drill by hand the locations for all of those seven holes. I think I got one of them wrong on one of them but other than that, it was more a matter of aligning the holes within this shape perfectly, which I definitely couldn't have done by hand. I was probably off by several thou. If I were to redo these, I'd probably get them laser cut because I found out only after going through all this process and paying for the material that a company called Send Cut Send actually has as the, one of their default materials, grade 5 titanium, and they will do it in 0 0.06 inch thickness, which is a little bit less than the 0 0.063 inch that I'm using but like not enough for it to really matter. And they also do eighth inch thick if you're looking for something beefier for a heavier robot, or maybe even like layered to make a weapon for like, or, or not even one layer for like an ant weight weapon or something would probably be good. They also have various tool steels available or at least hot, hot rolled steel. I think that Oshkot does 01 tool steel and Oshkot also does AR500, which is what I got this blade cut out of and how I got this blade made. So they're another good source for uh, harder steels. Both Oshkut and Sandcut Send I believe do 5052 aluminum and 6061 aluminum in quarter inch thicknesses and I think uh, Sandcut Send even does up to half an inch of 5052 so I think that depending on the part one might be cheaper than the other but Oshkut doesn't list titanium as an option so if you want to do something like this I would recommend Send Cut Send to you. I found out about them through a uh, random encounter with somebody at the Makerspace, but it's possible they'll actually be a sponsor for the BattleBots team that I am hoping to be working with in coming season if 2020 season actually happens. So more info will come on that later, but I'm getting off on a tangent. Uh, so yeah, let's talk a bit more about the upright. So what worked and what didn't work? What worked? Having a slot so that the motor could slide like up and down a bit was fantastic because that allowed me to tension the belt better with the tooth pulleys. 
What didn't work was the tooth pulleys. <laughs> um, in one of my fights, you'll see that the pulley came off with a bit of the motor shaft inside of it still, and the pulley was unscathed. The first time the pulley, actually the first two times that my pulley broke off in fights, one was at Franklin and one was at the first fight at Sword, and both times the weapon like hit it, and it wasn't clear to me whether the pulley, or whether the motor shaft failed because of the motor body suddenly stopping, and then because of the pulley, and that causing the shaft to shear off in torsion, or if it was because the pulley like worked its way loose or the weapon flexed over too far and just hit it and like broke it off in shear. So one of those failures gave me the answer to that because the pulley was completely unscathed and hadn't been touched by the weapon. So it turned out that it was actually the torsional failure, which means that the fact that I had a tooth pulley and was stopping the rotation of the motor instantly was actually putting so much strain on the uh, motor shaft that the shaft was just tearing itself in half and not the weapon just flexing and like ripping it off which like there's no way that that would have been preventable if that were the case. So good to know what's the cause of failure and then in my last fight I switched from the tooth to the smooth pulley and that worked perfectly fine for quite a few pretty big impacts. You can see my robot bouncing all around. I might include the slow-mo footage of that uh, with the robot like bouncing itself off the floor repeatedly doing crazy backflips and stuff. And the weapon kept going after that happened twice. And then it was only after the uh, ESC had a solder connection failed that the motor stopped, but the belt was still on the whole time and the pulley stayed attached to the motor shaft and the motor shaft stayed attached to the motor. So. I think that that's really the only fix I needed was going back to a smooth pulley for that. Um, so yeah, let me. That brings us, I guess, ultimately to the current issues and potential future changes that I have in mind. So, firstly, for the the upright pocketing out this upright turned out to be a bad idea um, because the pulley sits so close to the weapon when it's pocketed and the motor shifts over about an eighth of an inch. So pushing it back that other eighth of an inch, maybe even further to make it so that this is almost coincident with this wall. And maybe even modifying this pulley so that I, I have like a set screw in the middle of the teeth here so that I don't even need this hub so I can push it over as far as I want on the shaft as is um, would help greatly in spacing it away from the weapon to prevent the weapon from hitting it off again. I may counter or countersink the holes for the weapon and then use the flat head screws so that I can push the weapon over physically further, though I also am worried about the weapon flexing the other way and hitting this upright, so I might not do that. Um, I have to replace the motor shafts on three motors that they sheared off of, one at Franklin and two at Sword, and uh, Hobby King doesn't sell the 2836 motor shafts. They sell 2830 motor shafts, which a representative that I talked to via live chat said should work, but I'm pretty sure they're actually shorter uh, by, you know, six millimeters. Surprise. Um, so I'm not certain that that'll work. Um, the shafts are weird because they're like, they're actually four millimeters here, and then they taper down to three millimeters just after they come out of the front of the motor. So I don't have that CAD in because I had to make this CAD model myself from scratch, so I just drew it as an eighth inch shaft. I'm sorry, they tapered down to an eighth inch, not three millimeters, but anyway. Uh, this is annoying because if the 2830 motor shafts are like that, then they'll taper before they get to the bearing, which will be sized for a four millimeter at the front of the motor. Um, so that could be a real problem for sure and I might end up having to make my own custom 4mm shafts, which will be stronger anyway because they won't be tapered down to an eighth inch, which is 3.175mm, but that's a whole other problem because that has to be really, really, really precise, and it will need a very precise groove for a C-clip, which will be kind of difficult to do by hand on a lathe. The only lathe that I have access to at the Makerspace doesn't have a DRO, so making a feature that small precisely will be kind of a pain. And also just generally like lathing hardened steel shafts would be difficult in the first place. So I'd like to avoid that if possible. 
Um, I'm looking at maybe just finding another motor. That stock has a four millimeter shaft. That's just like longer than it needs to be and cutting that down. Cause I think that would be easier than trying to lathe my own, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, the overall fit and finish of the wedges isn't great. So like I said, send cut send might get them uh, laser cut and then that would solve that problem. Also, because I reduced the weight of the robot by getting rid of the aluminum forks, and uh, I I ended up kind of overcompensating a bit, and the top armor I think is lighter too. So I overcompensated for and removed too much weight, and now I'm like more than an ounce underweight. So I might actually use titanium for side armor as well, because I have weight for that. So sun could send laser cutting that might be a good option there too. And the base plate, I need to drill an extra hole and move this uh, top armor mount. If you look here, um, you. So the top armor, if I hide just the actual top armor itself, not the mounts, you'll see there's this one mount right here that in real life is actually kind of like inside the battery. Even here, you can kind of see it inside the battery. So in real life, the battery is actually like slanted diagonally because I pushed this too far uh, forward. So I uh, I need to drill like an extra hole like right around here and kind of push that back so that the battery fits in more nicely. And I also probably just want to swap. I have like two more completely brand new looking base plates that I painted slightly less well than the other two that I used on Division version 2s that I brought to um, Norwalk Havoc. I brought two of them fully assembled. Um, so I have one, or, or two like pristine, not bent at all base plates. Whereas when I was at Sword, I was actually using the same uh, frame that I used at Franklin, where it came down really hard from a seven foot fall on like a corner of the wedge. The wedge broke off and the base plate bent slightly. And I kind of like sketchily bent it back almost by hand, but it's not perfectly flat anymore, so I should probably address that. Um, and then, what else? I I need to use smooth pulleys. I have to reprint some smooth nylon pulleys that are the right size, make them pretty much the largest size that my slots will accommodate so that I have more torque on the weapon and less speed since I've been running it at way less than full speed on pretty much all my fights anyway, and it's plenty destructive as is. And potentially want to CNC some polycarbonate top armor instead of continuing to use this 3D printed armor just because I really like the aesthetic of having uh, see-through top armor. I also may need to figure out a new way of getting the lettering onto that top armor if I'm CNCing it because I would either have to buy a V-Brit engraver or use a V-Brit engraver and then I but I wouldn't get as like crisp of these lines because it's like gonna be a radius bit if I do that. So I might look into like stenciling a spray paint onto it or something like that. Or maybe uh, I can try laser etching. But uh, polycarbonate, it absorbs the heat from the laser too well and it'll tend to like melt or burn instead of cutting. So unfortunately you can't laser cut polycarb. You can laser cut acrylic, but not polycarb. So yeah, that pretty much covers my changes to Division 2.5 and future changes I have planned, hopefully. That is useful information for somebody, and I'll see you guys in the next video.